net asset fund is $32.32 billion. You're a commodity. You're, you're just like uh, bacon and, and, and orange juice or anything else. You're a commodity and you're being traded. Since there is no money, they have to use you as a gold bar, basically. And, and you're being traded in, in, in the world economy. Crazy, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs>Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm back with Chris Marrero, and we are going to be discussing, are we going to do money? I think money, like uh, Chris says, money doesn't exist. I don't know. I feel like it exists. I think this is interesting. I think he has an interesting take on it. I would like to say that uh, although Chris says that money doesn't exist, it's just like ones and zeros, and he's got a whole thing, I would like to say he also did tell me in an early conversation that he is paying his rent with money. But anyway, that's how you buy groceries. Though. But I, he's got a whole thing, and it's, I think it's 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 interesting. So check this out. This is all you got to do, bro, and you just put these up. You could talk to other guys who you know are crazy, um, or you know that believe this stuff. <laughs> Tell me, okay. So look, when we were locked up, you were like, you had this whole thing, the whole thing about how. First of all, I, I want to start with. Because I, I I've heard this way before I met you. What? That as a U.S. citizen, we technically don't have to pay income taxes because the law that was never ratified or something. I forget. So what is the story behind? So let's do two things. One, explain that to me, and two, explain to me how the government makes money and and the whole system because I have it all wrong. All of us out here, in reality, working within <laughs> within the confines of the government, we've got it wrong, and you know what's really going on. So <clears throat> we'll talk about that. But first, let's talk about the why do U.S. why do citizens in general why are we paying taxes? You're saying well, it's not just you. It's it, there's a whole movement that says I don't have to pay. You're they're extracting your energy is what they're doing. That every every dollar bill that you work for is your energy. It represents your energy. Okay, Can we, let, one thing at a time. First, why do you, citizens not? Why I'm like you're saying I don't. I'm not even. You're saying I don't have to pay. Well, let's I go to the to beginning. Pay. Let's go to the beginning. What is money? Okay. What is money? Money is gold and silver in actuality. Yes. Okay. So the note, the U.S. note, or any note from any government is a promise to redeem that. You can redeem this for money or for actual but, gold. Yeah, but you're getting way ahead of yourself there. Okay. First okay. of all, the way it started was um, people used to carry around gold and it became too heavy. So they would give it to the goldsmith and the goldsmith would give them a certificate that says with that certificate, they could now go purchase, you know, bread and, you know, milk and or get their horses shot or whatever. Right. Because it said $50 or 100 or you know, and they would get change for it. Now, what happened was, under House Joint Resolution 192, back in June 5th, 1933, Roosevelt took away all the gold and silver, all the gold. Remember? Do you remember that or no? He took away all gold. It, in, when, I was born in 69. What's your birth guy do with it? Well, I mean, I, 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 you said, do I remember? I don't remember Roosevelt. Well, I think he was long dead by oh, the time I came I on. see. History only began in 1969. Is that correct? <laughs> so I do know that they went around. There's nothing and, that happened before then in the world of reality of Matt Cox. <laughs> so I do know during the Great Depression, they collected precious metals. Yes. Right. So it, it, Roosevelt took away, took all the gold from the people, right? right. Gave them Federal Reserve notes, which was at the time you could go to a bank. It's a certificate and you could pull out silver. You can get silver back or gold, whatever. But 1971, August of 71, I believe it was, Nixon took us off the gold standard. So a Federal Reserve note, so a note is point, evidence of a debt. It has no value. Okay, the gold standard at that point we had to have reserves of gold for all the money that was being printed. Right. So we, that, the Federal Reserve couldn't print more money than we had gold to back it up. Supposedly, 
and that's not happening anymore. No, There's no yeah, gold in Fort Knox. Standard, that was what the gold standard was. We, or, the people, became the gold bars. So, so Nixon did what? He took us off the gold standard. He said, we ain't was, doing that anymore. Yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Now we're just going to create pr print money. And we promise we don't have the gold to back it up, but we promise we're good for it. What's backing the dollar bill? Do you know? The United States um, promised to pay. Our labor. Okay. It's our labor that backs the gold, that, that backs the, the money. See, because a Federal Reserve note, a note is evidence of a debt. It's a debt instrument. Therefore, it has no value. It's not backed by anything. It costs the same amount to make a dollar bill as it does to make a hundred dollar bill. It's three cents. So what gives it value? Only perception. Right. Okay. Same thing that gives value to let's like stocks. So if you took the stock, the stocks might be trading at a hundred dollars a share, but the truth is if you sold the company and sold off all of its assets at top dollar, you might get $30 a share. But it's it's the in, yeah. it's the it's the uh, spec it's speculation that it will continue to rise and the con company will continue to make money and that yeah I'll be able to sell it for this it's all it's speculation right it's per perception perception right so it's the same with with Bitcoin too it's perception so absolutely with Bitcoin more than anything there's nothing right. back there there's nothing back in it so it's the same with dollar bill so. A, a, even the bill itself is not made out of papers. You know what it's made out of? It's made out of uh, um, cotton. linen and linen. cotton, dungarees, blue yeah. jeans, things like that. It's not made, made out of paper. So there really is no value to a dollar bill. And that's what we're trying to get away from. We're trying to get away from the, the use of Federal Reserve notes because they have no value. You want to get into something else, which is gold and silver some sort of uh, thing that has value. Even food has more value than, than gold and silver, as a matter of fact, because if, you know, shit hits a fan and you're in a cop in an apocalypse or something, food has got to have a little more value to eat them, even than gold, you know? Yeah. So you can't, you can't eat gold. Yeah. It's so, so um, that's it. basically the nut and bolt of it all. There is no money. And, I don't know if you heard what's happening in China now. China's going into some real problems. They're gonna, ha they're having some real uh, uh, problems with uh, people can't get money out of the bank. They yeah. can't. They, they, I mean, they're they're going through some uh, shit right now. Hit, shit yeah, hit they're about the to have about three times, about about ten times the financial crisis of two thousand eight. Like they're about to have major, like sixty or seventy percent of their their value is based on real estate and their whole real estate. They're talking about how it's going to lose 70% of its value. Like everybody's so worried about China, you know, invading Taiwan and doing this. It's like, well, these people are th this, this thing is, it's a, it's a powder cake. Like it's, they're not doing well at all. Like they can't launch a fucking war. They can't, they can't venture into a world war right now. So they can run around and they can, they can circle the island and they can march and they can talk shit. But the truth is, is like, you guys aren't doing well at all. You can't afford to, they're good. They can't, they're already going to have a major problem. If everything goes right from here on out, they got about 10 years of recovery and they haven't even hit bottom yet. They built overbuilt so many places and they have so many ghost towns. They have that trains have, that nobody uses. They're like, crazy. they're like 10, 20% of the, the capacity of the train that people are using. And they're people have crazy. been paying up front for Isn't mortgages. That Isn't that nuts? You, I'm giving you money and I'm going to start, I'm going to pay for the whole house and I'm going to start making the payments and you haven't even started. The, then they take the money and they buy something else with it. In the United States, you'd be doing 20 years. Yeah, easy. And, yeah. and, yeah. and they just allow this and, and, and then nothing happens. And this, these people are rioting now. It's going crazy. I've seen some of it. It's, it's pretty, pretty nuts. But anyway, in this country, there's no money. And, and they just keep printing it and printing it and printing it. And inflation goes up. The more you dilute the system, the more it gets worse. I mean, it's not like it's backed by anything. So right. it's going to come to a collapse sooner or later. Eventually, it has to. It has to collapse. But then what will be 
in, in its stead, it was at one point the Amero. They were going to put the Amero because the Amero was connected to the Euro. But then too many people found out about the Amero and they all got pissed off. And, they you know, it was just too much. They didn't release it. But you I think you probably still look it up. The Amero is A-M-E-R-O. Yeah, yeah. there was going to be a currency for all of the uh, Americas, right? Like all. Right. For South America. They were trying yeah, to get, uh, Mexico, Mexico, Canada. And, Everybody uh, go on it like the euro. Yeah, remember that. And eventually, they would be able to cross over to all the, you know, to like a one world, you know, currency or something at some point in the future. You know, a hundred years, fifty years from now, whatever. It's a slow process, but yeah, it ain't happening. So they want to do a global currency reset, but then what does that involve? Is if there's not going to be no dollar, and the dollar is the, you know, the currency that that everyone falls back on, then you know. Do you have any clue? I don't know. That they're keeping a really freaking tight secret because there really is no money. Money is gold and silver, and people don't have enough of it. They don't have any of it really in the system that you're allowed to have. Okay, but you're saying that we've talked about this, that the United States government creates money when we're born off of our birth certificates. Well, they create money out of thin air. Well, okay. What are they doing with our birth certificates? There's just something it, to do with the birth certificates and trading. Yeah, they're trading it. They're trading it on the stock market. Oh, so my your, your birth certificate is a stock certificate. That's why they put a QCIP number on it, so they can internationally trade it and keep track of it. And they trade it what? So I'm born. What am I worth? Like, so they, who do they? who does the United States government trade my birth? Who do they? They have my birth certificate. Like, what do they get for it? They put it on the open market. Somebody, China Let says, me, I'll give you a hundred bucks for that. What? Let me show you again. Let me get what? the paper. Yeah, I mean, you can. <laughs> All right. So this is the birth certificate. Right. There's this your... is the cert. It's, as you can see here, net asset fund is $32.32 .32 billion. Its inception date was 1985, which was, I was 25 years old at the time. The symbol, that's the ticker symbol on it. This is the major QSIP number. And being currently being traded, see what it says there? Yeah. Through Fidelity Institutional Money Market. Okay. And that's the birth certificate, as you can see here. Right. But when you say being traded, what are they trading? They're trading your birth certificate. Uh, like, like, how does that work? Break it down. Talk to me like I'm a small child. You're a commodity. You're, you're just like uh, bacon and, and, and orange juice or anything else. You're a commodity. And you're being traded. They have to, since there is no money, they have to use you as a gold bar, basically. And, and you're being traded in, in, in the world economy. Crazy, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Yes, it is. You see this? Check this out. This is all the prospectuses. See this? Okay, see that? That's a yeah. per, that's a prospectus from Fidelity on that particular uh, ticker, which is FMPXX. Okay. For the stupid live birth. And that's just one document. Here's another one. Another fidelity. Can you see it? Another fidelity perspective on that ticker. Hard to do that. So, so what are you trading at? Uh, in 2014, it was $32 billion. Now it's at um, the year 2022. So, it's probably about 164 billion or so, roughly, on a major QSIP number. I, I, I don't understand. So you're saying that your your birth certificate, they're somehow or another they're trading. I don't even understand what are they trading. Like you're saying they're trading you, but well, you don't. But the thing about you, you need to get that. Yeah, hold on. Hello. Anyway, um. There are major QSIP numbers and minor QSIP numbers. So think of it this way. Look, 
let's say this right here represents a major Q sub number, right? This okay. entire, but each line represents a minor Q sub number. So you're going to have 25 or so minor Q sub numbers in a major. So I'm, let's say, one of these lines, but I'm in the major Q sub number. All right. I Okay, here's the thing. If we're a commodity like bacon or orange juice and we're traded, the difference is that your bacon and orange juice has a value at some point. They actually can be sold and purchased. You and I aren't being sold and purchased. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Based on this, what? This explains it. I wish I could see this is one of the things I wish I could. Based on what, though? Based on your, your it's like a, any stock. Your birth certificate is a stock certificate. Okay, but but a stock, like if if I have stock in, let's say, General Motors, General Motors pays dividends. You and I don't pay dividends unless you're saying what we pay in in taxes. And let's face it, you and I have been a drain on society. <laughs> Even then, when I pay it in, it ain't going to pay off how much it costs to house me in the BOP. Yeah, but it, it is your full faith and credit that backs the entire American system. Where do you think they get the full, the full faith and credit from? It's your credit. It's you. When you sign for a house, like I was saying, mm -hmm. that promissory note is a check. You're getting unlimited credits when you're born from the treasury. And they deposit that into a bank account. And then they fractionalize it 10 to 15 times. I, I the, love entire, the entire yeah. housing system was not made for people. It was made for the banks so they could make money that way. I love that you're leaned in and I can only see one of your eyes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because you it just makes you look, you know, menacing. A little bit scary. Kind of a big brother thing. So what all right, so so the bank, when the bank gives me a mortgage, what are they giving me? It's a statute staple, unconscionable secondary contract. No. And it's a fraud. Total. But I still end up with the house. You still what? I didn't hear I, that. I still end up with the house. Yes, but they're into securities. That promissory note is a security. And that's what they're into. They didn't loan you any money. That house was actually, let me show you here. I, I'm, I can't show you. I'm going to read it to you because it's really There's a case you should also read called the Credit River Decision. Incredible. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. I'm waiting for you to read it. Can you see me? I can see your eye. You're leaning into something. Okay, there. hold on. See, the affidavit of Walker Todd. Walker Todd was an attorney for the Federal Reserve for 20 years. I have heard... I have heard you talk about Walker Todd. Right. Didn't he write a book? In Clause 17 of the affidavit of Walker Todd. Now, the, the, the plaintiff is Bank One. And he says that the plaintiff, in fact, never lent any of its own pre-existing money, credit, or assets as consideration to purchase the note or credit agreement from the defendants. He says, also, the plaintiff is trying to use the credit application form or the note to persuade and deceive the defendants, which are the homeowners, into believing that the opposite occurred and the defendants were the borrower and not the lender. Do you follow that? It means that the, own, the person who's buying the house is actually the lender not the bank. It says here, the bookkeeping entries tend to prove that banks accept cash, checks, drafts, and promissory notes, which are credit agreements, assets, 
as money deposited to create credit or checkbook money that are bank liabilities, which shows that absence any right of set off, banks owe money to persons who deposit money. Cash, money of exchange, is money and credit or promissory notes, which is money of account, become money when banks deposit promissory notes with the intent of treating them like deposits of cash. And that's United States Code Title 12, Section 1813 L1. Who is this guy again? He's a, he was a lawyer. He was a lawyer for the Federal Reserve for 20 years. The newly issued credit or money is similar or equivalent to a promissory note, which may be treated as a deposit of money. In Modern Money Mechanics, page 6, what the banks do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. So do you understand what I'm reading to you? It means that they never lent you any money. They don't right. lend money. It is all from the promissory note that they, they actually monetize. Ex on page 11, it says that on money, mo uh, money, money and banking, page 11 explains that when banks grant loans, they create new money. The money is, cr the new money is created because a new loan becomes a deposit just like a paycheck does. Dude, it's such a freaking scam. It's unbelievable. It's so huge a fraud that people can't even grasp their mind around it. I can't. It's extremely confusing to me. It is, and that's how they want it. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, money is anything that has value that banks and people accept as money. Money does not have to be issued by the government. Money doesn't have to be intrinsically valuable, be issued by the government, or be in any special form. This would show that the bank received the customer's signed promise to repay as an asset, thus monetizing the customer's signature and creating on its books a liability in the form of a demand deposit or other demand liability of the bank. The most valuable you th thing that you have, Matt, is your signature. It is not an unreasonable argument to state that plaintiff apparently changed the economic substance. The plaintiff is now the bank, bank one in this case, Change the economic substance of the transaction from that contemplated in the credit application form agreement notes or other similar instruments that the defendants executed thereby changing the costs and the risks to the defendant, which creates at least the inference of inequality of obligations. They never lent any money. They never gave any consideration. And they never, and as you know this, they never show up at the title closing, do they? Banks never show up at a title closing. No, but they they wire money and then it gets released to the the home. So the guy that builds this house, so he builds a house and then he puts it on the market and he sells it. He gets something. He for gets that it in his account. Right. Money. When you get a credit card, you're not getting cash, you're getting credits. Right, but I can buy stuff with the credit card. Right, but understand that it's not cash. It's all on a computer. It's credits on a computer. It's not cash and that you can pull out of your pocket. Well, I understand, but it, you're, it's still being traded and mm -hmm. used as a as a a value of labor, right? Right, but this is why I went to prison. I went to prison because they commingled private credits with public funds. Okay. It's credits, private. That's what a promissory note is, private credits. 
it's complicated, isn't it? <laughs> it's extremely complicated, and I don't think I'm smart enough to wrap my head around it. And I'm wondering, like, if you know all this, how do you use this to your advantage? Okay. Um, all right. This is how it works for me that I'm going to do it. I've done this where I've recorded a promissory note that I drew up. Okay. And the trick is that you have the th couple things you have to do. One is you want to securitize that promissory note so you don't need a mortgage. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the back of the social. It has a letter and eight digits on it that represents a Federal Reserve Bank. All right. So what you're going to do is this is what I'm going to do. You notice them that you're going to use them as a security on a promissory note. Right. You notify them. I'm, you're using them as a security. Yeah. They're going to be the, this promissory note is going to be securitized by them, basically. By okay. Them. OK, so. Once I do that, I then I, they've been noticed they are going to be fault and defaulted. They're not going to answer it, which is great. That's what you want. And then I record the promissory note. So if I'm going to do a purchase of a, you know, a, a commercial property, let's say. Right. A million dollar property. I'll make the 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 promissory note out for, well, let's say three million dollars. So I record it and I'm going to have the title company use that as the actual or the bank. I'll go to the bank and have them actual credit the account. So I have the money there, the credits, I should say. And then I can use the credits to purchase the uh, the uh, commercial loan, the, you know, the, the property or the commercial property, or whatever I'm going to use for. So that's how you get away from doing the actual, oh, I got to fill out this to get a mortgage and all this bullshit. You know, the usual standard crap that you got to go through to uh, to get a mortgage. So that's how it's going to benefit me. I'm not teaching this, but. That's one of the things I'm doing it. Now, you also might want to uh, include banks do what's called a medallion signature stamp. I don't know if you're aware of that. You aware no. of that? Yeah. Well, what, so you're going to walk in with a promissory note to the bank and ask them to basically credit your account. Correct. Because it'll all be securitized already. And they're going to they're going to be OK with it. Like Bank of America is going to be like, yeah, no problem. Well, you got to talk to the right person. You can't just still go to the teller. The teller's not going to know what the hell you're talking about. Who's the right person? Hmm? Well, it depends on the bank, but usually it's the person who is uh, has the medallion stamp signature or the person who uh, is managing the actual you know, bank there. The guy behind the curtain. Yeah, behind the, the curtain. Wizard. you got to talk the to wizard. the wizard. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I would love to be there when you walk in the bank and hand them this thing and say, Hey, listen, I need you to credit my account by, for a 400 million. Listen, a matter of fact, you do that and I will come down and video the whole thing. <laughs> I would love to see it. Like I would love to be there with the camera when they go, excuse me. So, yeah, I mean, you You're talk to the bank president or the, whoever's hand, you know, the manager of that particular, uh, um, and when, are you thinking, when are you thinking about doing this? Um, I just need time to do it, dude. It, it takes time to do all this shit. And I can't walk around. I can't, you know, I got to get off the ankle monitor. You know, it's just a pain in the ass. I can't Bozi get anything done. Boziak and I will come down and personally video that whole thing. <laughs> I want to be there when this guy says, stay right here. Let me get the security guard. I'm I'm going to have you removed from the bank, sir. And you go, no, no, <laughs> look, I have the stamp, the Cusick number. And he's going to know you guys want, he's going to say, no, no, I know what you're talking about. You guys wander in here every few weeks. <laughs> and we have you removed. You can stay in the parking lot. Sometimes you guys stay in the parking lot. Sometimes, as the police are dragging you off, you guys will start screaming about being sovereign citizens. You have no right. 
You have no, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. Wow, good times. Is there medication? <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> um, yeah. Look. <laughs> Like, okay. Uh, but how are you going to react if it works, right? Bro, exactly. You're going to say, know, holy oh shit. My God. Like when you were like, you had me and Paul, and I forget who else signed. What was it? The the um, the um non-believers contract? Oh, the contract of non-believers. <laughs> of unbelievers. Of unbelievers. <laughs> Red Bull. Oh, was it Red Bull? Yeah, it was, you, yeah, it was you, Red Bull, and uh, the other guy. I forget his name. Paul, uh, um, uh, is it Paul? Um, we used to call him a uh, 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 Lickalotopus, uh, uh, call, call whatever his name is. <laughs> Paul something. I don't you, remember. You don't remember Paul? No. Oh, my God. He was hilarious. He gave you such a hard time. Oh, um, <laughs> no, that's right. We used to call him. Cockalotopus. <laughs> His name is uh, uh, Kamakalotis, Kakamalotis, whatever. Anyway, Paul. I can never say his name. Anyway, he's remember he's from Greek. No, he's from Cyprus. He was a frog man in Cyprus, remember? Oh, really? You, how can you not remember Paul? I don't remember. Hey, do you remember Jose Palacio? No. Dude, let me tell you a story real quick. Okay. I was doing some legal work for Palacio <clears throat> and he was going to, he brought me to his, uh, his uh, place, you know, to pay me. Right. And he had two uh, lockers on top of each other, which no inmate had two lockers on top of each other. I don't know how right. he did it, but he opens the top locker and it is literally Matt. It is full of mackerel. I mean, for those who don't know, we get paid by mackerel. Commerce in in the system is mackerel or stamps. Right. And he had a locker lo literally full. You cannot fit another mackerel in there. And I'm saying, Jose, what the hell do you do to get so many mackerel? Matt, what he does is he carves those domino pieces into hearts and into like Mickey Mouse or things like that. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. They put he, in that. He takes their penis, cuts it, and puts those in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do they call them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. These guys would have. They would. They would insert. They would have the things inserted inside in their penises, and they would have like, you know, they'd have a heart or a little dumbbell. Like, cause they like to work out or a house cause they were in real estate and it ended up looking, it would end up looking like a, like a, like a charm bracelet. It's like, you know, like Pandora. Man, that is so dangerous. I mean, the <laughs> <laughs> arteries in there, you got all kinds of veins. Oh my God. And that's what he did. Dr. Palacio, we called him that afterward. <laughs> yeah. That yeah was... the, the Puerto Ricans were huge in, do, in doing that. Yeah. Yeah. They're big into that shit. It's ridiculous. Fucking idiots. <clears throat> I'm trying to. Oh, how can you not? This is. Yeah. You don't remember him? Is that a him? him? No, not the little girl. Him, the guy. Oh, Paul, yes, Paul. I remember Paul. Yes, I remember Paul. <laughs> yeah, he used to get on my case all the time. Yeah, he was always giving you a hard time. He was great. Yeah. Did he get out? What's up with him? Oh, yeah, he got out. He was there for kidnapping, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said he got set up or something. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. I know my buddies, his story always, you know, like my buddy, uh, some guy, he just called me and said, hey, this guy owes me money. Can you go pick up like uh, $200,000 in a parking lot? Yeah, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, if, if my buddy Travis called me and said, Matt, listen, I'm busy, but this guy owes me 200 grand. He's going to meet you in a parking lot 
Don't talk to them. Just walk <laughs> up and get take the money and get in your car and then bring it straight here. I would be like, nah. Feel like I'm with you. I want to believe you. Believe We're you. friends. I don't we're, know. We're buddies for life, but nah. No, but my fear is we will be buddies for life. <laughs> we'll be sellies for life, you know, because I went and picked up $50,000 and you kidnapped some dude. <clears throat> and that's what he had done is his, they, they, did they kidnap the guy or did the plan? I don't know. I think somebody was supposed to get kidnapped. Someone was supposed to get kidnapped. Right. Paul says he doesn't know anything about that. Although Paul is, out of all the guys involved, like one guy was like a retired lawyer. One guy was like a fucking CPA. And the only one who's truly dangerous was Paul. Like Paul is an ex um, frog man from Cyprus. He was in the Cyprus military. Right. He's, um, he's a tough, tough guy. He's a pain like, in the ass. He was, but he was a tough guy. He was career. He was, I mean, sorry, he was in the military. Like, this is a tough, pretty tough guy. Like, I mean, if you, out of these three guys, he seems like the one that was capable of doing the crime, not the other guys. But Paul says, you know, it's all a misunderstanding. It's all a misunderstanding. Same with me. It's all a misunderstanding. Me too. <laughs> Your honor. I know how this looks. <laughs> they got it all wrong. I'm a nice guy. Remember, I wanted to put in the nice guy motion. I tell everybody, I'm going to put in a nice guy motion. They're like, they're like, Cox, what are you doing about your fucking, about your sentence? I'm, bro, I'm thinking about putting in a nice guy motion. They're like, well, what's that? Like, I'm a nice guy. Your honor, I need, you need to cut my sentence. I'm a nice guy. I was going through something. I was going through, I had some issues. I'm all better now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know the great thing about the court is that you can file a nice guy motion and you can write it in green crown <laughs> in block letters like a child and they will respond like like it's a real motion like they'll the the court will get it and say you know uh uh you know uh, the united states versus matthew cox or you know matthew cox was placed put in put into the put into the court uh, a nice guy motion. He wants to have his sentence reduced. Uh, U.S. attorney, you have 30 days to respond. And they'll respond, uh, your honor, you know, uh, we have received the nice guy motion. We have reviewed, you know, and then they'll tell about who you are. And Mr. Cox has, you know, has not proven that, you know, after reading the nice guy motion, Mr. Cox has not, you know, solidified his argument that he deserves to have his sentence reduced as a result of being a nice person. And, and they'll, like, they'll answer it like it's a real thing. I've met guys in the shoe that actually did a whole motion on toilet paper. Amazing. That's what it is. And what's amazing is that they will respond like it's not ludicrous. And you're like, yeah, man, they're taking me seriously. No, they're not. No, they're <laughs> not. They just have to respond like it's a serious motion. Right. And and so guys, so any idiot in in prison can start filing legal work and the other inmates are like, "Yeah, bro, that's good. I see they responded. Oh, I, I, did you read what they said? Yeah, yeah, but they said this and I know we're going to fight that though. We're going to fight that." And so you can get these guys to think that you're really doing something when really the court knows it's all babble. Like this is just this is nothing. I wonder what this guy's doing. He's, he's sending me motions in pen. What did you think when Frank first took on your case? Did you think it was all going to be babble? Of course. Of course, I thought he was a fucking lunatic. He is. He is a lunatic. I also got 12 years off my fucking sentence. He filed <laughs> two 2255s. Government said, we're not giving you nothing. We ain't take, cutting off any time off your sentence. Go fuck yourself. Frank said, <laughs> no, no, I've got this. When my legions, I got your back, back, Matt. Huh? I got your back, Matt. Yeah. Not a problem. Right. <laughs> when my legions march on the on Washington, and we will burn the Constitution, and the president will kneel at my feet. It's like Frank, man. I just want some time off, bro. <laughs> time off. And he would go, "Oh, yeah, no, no, we're gonna file twenty two fifty five. Let me get the paperwork." Um, yeah. 
She was crazy. Yeah, I know. And then they responded, and then he responded, and then they responded, and he responded. And the next thing you know, they're like, all right, fine, we're going to reduce your sentence. He got me two attorneys appointed to me. They he wouldn't touch my me. case. Why wouldn't he touch my case? Because you said sovereign citizen. It wasn't on the documents. It wasn't on the indictment. No, but you had you had this whole thing, that the whole kind of sovereignty thing where you were <laughs> going to do this. And you wanted him to do this. And he said, listen, I'm not getting involved in all that. Because you, you were going about it through the whole... The money was never borrowed. It was the same thing you just explained now. And he said, that's lunacy. And keep in mind, he said, that's lunacy. It's not. It's a, I can, I read you Walker Todd. I mean, I know that makes it all right, but <laughs> I could read you more modern money mechanics. But he said, but, you know, <laughs> the problem is he's playing within, he's playing within their world, but he's playing in their sandbox. You're not playing in their sandbox and they no. don't like that. Yeah. They want you to stay in the sandbox. You won't do that. You won't do that. You're you're coloring outside the lines. That's not that's inappropriate. I'm gonna play in the swings now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let's let's do that. Let's take a break. Okay, for how long? I don't know. You want to take a break for a couple of minutes? You get what, what time is it? It's almost twelve. Yeah, I got it. I got to eat. I actually can't eat a yogurt because I'm actually out of food. You know what I have? What? Top ramen. God, are you eating that? Oh, my God. No, I'm not really down to eating it. But I did. Boziak had me convinced that they, all the shelves were going to dry up from food and we were going to be uh, starving to death and having to having to go hunt deer. Um, There's supposed but, to be food shortages coming in December. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they've, they've been saying that for six months. This fucking guy got me to go out and buy two or three hundred dollars worth of top ramen. I got a whole, I got a, a ton of water, top ramen, and canned fucking tuna and and chicken in the in there. I'm gonna have to start stop, start eating this stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know what happened. I was at a weak moment. He went on a tangent. He showed me some videos, and I was like, man, we gotta go to we 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 gotta we gotta go to um Sam's Club and buy some. And so we went and I told Jess and Jess, Jess, I was like, Jess, we're going to buy a couple, two, three hundred dollars worth of, and, you know, at least a couple weeks worth. And Jess went, listen, you're crazy. Said, you're crazy. He's not crazy, though. You'll see. OK, right, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But if hey, listen, if the if things don't happen soon, I'm going to. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it doesn't. It's, it's going to be a catastrophe. I'm telling you, it's going to be a riots. It's going to be crazy. But Biden likes that shit. Did you see the earlobe? I saw the earlobe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boy, that would be a funny video, too. Listen, oh, stop, stop, stop. Listen, we got to wrap this up. Let, <laughs> are you going to get something to eat? Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm going to make a sandwich or something. Um, do you want to make a sandwich and then we'll we'll come back in like like literally like 10 minutes or something and do the next video? Well, give me like 15 or 20. Okay, 15 or 20 minutes. 15 or 20 minutes because I, I, I want to get to the other videos, but I do have another thing at, at 3 o'clock. That's what do you three got? hours. That's plenty of time. What do you got? What do you got so, after me? Well, I have a guy that wrote a book on the Gardner Museum heist. Hmm. The Gardner Museum is the largest art heist in history. They stole like 13 paintings, I think seven or eight Rembrandts. This was back in the 80s, I think wow. 86 or something. And they've never recovered them. But he wrote a whole book about it. And he said, look, you just turn on the video. Let me talk. I'll talk for an hour straight. You don't have to say anything. I said, oh, that's perfect. I love it. That's How'd you I meet mean. this guy? I was interviewing a mobster. And the mob is rumored to have been involved. And so the mobster had been interviewed by this guy during the book, and he mentioned it during our interview. And I said, do you have that guy's phone number? I would love to interview him. So it's kind of a boom, you know, it's a leapfrog. <clears throat> but I got somebody you can interview, too. Remember I told you about her? She uh, she did the same thing I did. When she was at Coleman Camp. Oh, uh, I like that. Yeah. My girlfriend was at Coleman Camp. She used to ride the she used to ride the motorcycles and she said you'd ride by and the guys would be in the fucking windows. <laughs> she would just be like, What's what is wrong with these fucking guys? Or they'd they'd throw up their reg numbers like marry me or contact me and they'd put their fucking reg numbers up and the girls would just be driving by like, What are you doing? 
Nuts. Dude, I was in the in the in the paddy wagon, and there was a black guy trying to pick up another girl who had been arrested. She was put in the front seat, and he's trying to pick her up. And it's like, dude, you're in a paddy wagon. Yeah. It's like, and and at the Miami Detention Center, the way you would talk to the girls who were on the fifth floor, we were in the eleventh floor. They would Yelling take the all toilet. the water out of the toilet. They empty the water, and then they talk to it. Yeah. <laughs> it becomes a telephone. Yeah. <laughs> what are you nice. gonna do? Can't take her on a date. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, that's it. You tell her go get a go get a top ramen. I'm gonna get one. We'll heat it up. I'll eat it here next to the. I'll eat it next to the toilet, and we'll talk. <laughs> that's a date. <laughs> oh my god! Good that's times, right. Matt. Good times. Hey, I appreciate you guys checking this out. And I'm with Chris, uh, was with Chris Marrero. And if you like the video, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notified of videos like this. And um, yeah, leave me a comment. I appreciate it. And uh, the next time we talk to Chris, it's going to be about aliens. Chris knows all about aliens. And he, they're, they're ruling, they're running the whole show. He's going to tell us all about them. It's, a, it's interesting. See ya.